There's a time for everything in life, whether it's a time to be born, or a time to die, or the changing of the seasons. But right now, it's time to talk about one of the most overlooked and underappreciated animals that we've ever had in the Woods and Forests Media YouTube channel. With an origin story mostly unknown, we can trace Junia back to her time at California University of Pennsylvania. We are unsure when she was captured and how old she was, but we know she's at least between five and seven years old, confirmed. When I first learned about Junior's availability and the interest that the school had for me to take her, at first I was reluctant because I already had my fill of American toads. I wasn't sure that I wanted to take on another American toad, especially a female, because of their dominant behavior and aggressive nature. I became involved personally after I learned that the school had done an exhaustive search reaching out to many zoos and experienced keepers, and yet nobody wanted to touch Junia. They all overlooked her for a lot of the other exotic and really attractive looking frogs, reptiles, and other creatures that they had at the school. It greatly impacted me as I learned that nobody wanted her, so I made the decision that I was going to make it work and I brought Junior home July 5th of 2023. We learned from an examination from the vet that her muscle mass was slowly deteriorating living inside a 10 gallon enclosure and if we had not stepped in when we did, Junior was going to start withering away. As I learned this, I made the decision that she was going to start going into larger enclosures and have the ability to hunt like she would in the wild, and like my other animals do in the larger enclosures. So Junior went from a 10 gallon all the way up to a 40 gallon for quite a while. As tragedy continued to strike the Woods and Forests media brand, losing American Toad after American Toad, it slowly began to open up the opportunity for Junia to move into much larger enclosures. So she went from a 40 gallon to a 67 gallon terrarium. And then she made the venture into this 242 gallon Pennsylvania Woodland Ecosystem Vivarium. And ever since then, she hasn't looked back. It wasn't easy for her at first because we were unsure of her interactions with frogs and toads in the wild. But when she first entered this landscape, she thought the wood frog might be food and she was deathly scared of a male American toad, Ananias, who you'll meet later. After a few weeks living inside this ecosystem, she finally learned the dynamics of a hierarchy and she understands that the wood frog is not food and that the male toad is not going to hurt her. So now she spends her time trying to get hand fed by me or hunting other creatures. But it's really exciting to watch Junia inside the enclosure because she's very active and alert. She uses the entire space. I found her climbing on the very top of the background and I found her burrowed down as far as she could go. There's no length that this toad won't go to to adventure and explore. And there's nobody that deserves it more than this female American toad. It seems that Junia needs a little bit more practice catching earthworms. Something that Junia's never had to do before is compete with other frogs and toads for food. This is something that never came naturally to her, 
but after weeks of living inside the ecosystem, she started to learn that this is what she would have to do if she wanted to survive. Of course I wasn't going to let anything happen to her, but I wanted to see if she had the ability to hunt and also compete with a lot of frogs and toads that have been wild for much longer than she was. As you can see, we have a new and upcoming rivalry between Junia and Ananias in terms of who is the dominant toad in this ecosystem. This is something I'm very excited to see progress over the course of this channel for numerous years to come. And I can't wait to update you guys every so often about these two animals sharing the spotlight. But for now, Junia has a lot of room to grow if she wants to catch up to Ananias. She's definitely not as skilled of a hunter and she's definitely not as in tune with the environment she doesn't gracefully move back and forth between the enclosure. But that's what you can expect for a toad that's been living in captivity for possibly a decade. As I work to get more formality with keeping the animals since I have more time off graduating from graduate school, I now weigh the animals and also keep tabs on what they eat and how they eat. I run the kitchen almost like it's a lunchroom for a school, putting different items on the menu for what they're eating every other week. There's usually a special along with the staple prey items that I normally feed, which are roaches like dubia roaches or banded crickets. They might get horn worms, mealworms, wax worms, wax moths, black soldier flies, and the list goes on. The goal is to keep the animals at a specific weight and allow it to fluctuate based on the seasonality, but the goal is to be as hands-on and focused on caring for these animals as much as possible. There's so many great things that I'm going to do to make sure that Junia is with us for as long as she possibly can be, and I can't wait to tell more of the story of Junia. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share with your friends. And don't forget to follow The Woods Uncut for more on Junior and the other animals. But we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.